In the labyrinth of a nation's social safety net, a dark truth lurks beneath the surface, threatening the very foundation of her welfare state. Canada, a nation renowned for its commitment to the well-being of its citizens, has long prided itself on a robust system of social programs and entitlements from healthcare and education to welfare and pension plans. These programs have been a cornerstone of the Canadian society designed to provide a safety net for those in need. However, as the years have passed and the demands on these programs have grown, a new reality has begun to emerge, one that threatens to undermine the very foundation of Canada's social contract. The costs of these programs have skyrocketed, placing an ever-increasing burden on taxpayers and raising serious questions about their long-term sustainability and effectiveness. According to a report by the Fraser Institute, total government spending on these programs in Canada amounted to $352.1 billion subsidizing firms from 2007 to 2019 more than was spent on national defense over the same period. This represents a staggering increase of over 70% since 2000, far outpacing the economy's growth. At the same time, the cost of health care, one of the largest and most important social programs in Canada, is also rising at an alarming rate. According to the Canadian Institute for Health Information, total health care spending in Canada was projected to reach $308 billion in 2021, representing 12.7% of Canada's GDP and staggering $8,019 per person. This would represent an increase of over 4% from the previous year and is projected to continue to grow at a rate of over 5% per year for the foreseeable future. However, that year, the federal, provincial, and municipal governments compounded a lump sum of $329.4 billion and a horrifying sum of $343.8 billion by 2023. As entitlement programs expand and social spending skyrockets, a looming crisis emerges, casting doubt on the sustainability of Canada's cherished social programs. In this video, we will navigate the complexities of Canada's social welfare system, shedding light on the challenges and pitfalls of entitlement programs, from ballooning deficits to perverse incentives that have become deeply entrenched in Canadian society. The drivers of this cost increase are complex and multifaceted. Still, one of the most significant factors is Canada's aging population. As the baby boomer generation enters retirement and begins to draw on programs like Old Age Security, or OAS, and the Canada Pension Plan, or CPP, the strain on these programs keeps growing. According to the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, the number of OAS beneficiaries is expected to rise from 6 million in 2022 to 9.9 .9 million in 2050, while total expenditures are projected to grow from $56 billion in 2022 to $197 billion in 2050. Although these forms of pension plans and old age security programs are intended to provide a secure and dignified retirement for Canada's seniors, they increasingly strain demographic shifts and instigate economic pressure. The C.D. Howe Institute's financial statements for the fiscal year 2021-22 showed just over $1 trillion in revenues and expenses, around 36% of gross domestic product or nearly $28,000 per Canadian. Canada's senior governments use this money to provide services and transfer payments in areas such as health, education, national defense and policing, income support, and business subsidies. They automatically tax Canadians' incomes from work and savings, and they tax spending on most goods and services. Over time, their aggregate expenses have exceeded their revenues, resulting in accumulated deficits totaling $1.5 trillion at the end of 2021-22. To put that figure in perspective, it means that every Canadian citizen from the youngest child to the oldest senior would need to contribute over $40,000 today to fully fund these programs over the long term. And with the ratio of working-age Canadians to retirees expected to decline, the burden on future generations is only going to grow. In 1966, there were 7.7 .7 working-age individuals for every senior. This ratio has dropped quickly since then and stands at 3.4 in 2022. Statistics Canada projects this trend will continue in the decades ahead. There will be just 3.0 working age people for each senior by 2027, after which the ratio will slowly fall to 2.3 by 2068. The shrinking ratio of working age Canadians to seniors will put pressure on public finances in the years ahead as there will be fewer working taxpayers to help fund cash transfers to seniors and the increasing health care costs that will result from an aging population. 
But the costs of social programs and entitlements go beyond just dollars and cents. There are also social and economic costs to consider, costs that can have far-reaching and long-lasting consequences for individuals, families, and communities. For example, the high cost of welfare and other income support programs can create perverse incentives that discourage work and self-sufficiency. According to a report by the Fraser Institute, the marginal effective tax rate for individuals and families with modest incomes, particularly those earning between $30,000 and $60,000, is bizarre. In Quebec, for example, the marginal effective tax rate for a representative family within this income range is as high as 53 percent. Low-income families in Canada are particularly hard hit by high effective tax rates. Many take home only 40 cents or less on each additional dollar earned because of the combination of higher taxes and loss of federal and provincial transfer benefits. This welfare wall can make it extremely difficult for low-income Canadians to escape poverty and build a better life for themselves and their families. It can also lead to a cycle of dependency that spans generations as children grow up in households where work is not valued or rewarded. Moreover, the growing strain on pension plans and old age security programs can create economic distortions and disincentives that can undermine productivity and growth. For example, the high cost of these programs has proven to lead to higher taxes and reduced investment as businesses and individuals are forced to divert resources away from productive activities and towards funding social programs. This in turn can lead to slower economic growth, reduced job creation, and a lower standard of living for all Canadians, not just those who rely on social programs and entitlements. But it's not just the cost of these programs that is a concern. It's also the quality and effectiveness of the services they provide. Despite the enormous sums of money being poured into social programs and entitlements each year, many Canadians are not getting the support they need to lead healthy, productive lives. Take welfare, for example. According to Welfare Reports, the highest total welfare income of an unattached, single-considered employable household was in Quebec at $20,905. The second highest was in Prince Edward Island at $16,861, an amount that falls far short of what is needed to cover basic living expenses in most parts of the country. In Vancouver, for example, the cost of a one-bedroom apartment alone can exceed $2,000 per month, leaving little room for other essentials like food, clothing, and transportation. Similarly, the quality of healthcare in Canada, while still among the best in the world, is not always up to the standards that Canadians expect and deserve. According to a report by the Commonwealth Fund, Canada ranks 10th out of 11 developed countries in terms of the timeliness and accessibility of healthcare services services, with long wait times for procedures like joint replacements and MRI scans being a particular concern. Similarly, the high cost of healthcare can lead to rationing and other forms of cost containment that can compromise the quality and accessibility of care. In some parts of Canada, for example, patients can wait months or even years for non-emergency procedures like hip replacements or cataract surgery, delays that can have a significant impact on quality of life and overall health. Moreover, the growing strain on pension plans and old age security programs can create economic distortions and disincentives that can undermine productivity and growth. For example, the high cost of these programs can lead to higher taxes and reduced investment, as businesses and individuals are forced to divert resources away from productive activities and towards funding social programs. This in turn can lead to slower economic growth, reduced job creation, and a lower standard of living for all Canadians, not just those who rely on social programs and entitlements. But perhaps the most concerning is how high the cost of social programs and entitlements can undermine social cohesion and trust. When taxpayers feel that they are being asked to bear an increasingly heavy burden to support programs that are not meeting their needs or expectations, it can lead to resentment, frustration, and a sense of injustice. This can be particularly true for younger generations who may feel they are being asked to pay for programs that they may never fully benefit from themselves. As far back as 1951, the maximum old age pension payments were $40 per month and 308,825 people participated in the program. The latter figure amounted to about 47% of Canadians 70 years of age or over. In comparison, more than 3.5 million people in Canada received the maximum old age security pension in 2000. Statistics Canada's data shows that this represents 93% of the population aged age 65 and over. This intergenerational inequality, coupled with the growing strain on social programs and entitlements more broadly, threatens to erode the very foundation of Canada's social contract. It raises difficult questions about fairness, responsibility, and the proper role of government in supporting the well-being of its citizens. While these programs are intended to provide temporary assistance to those in need, the reality is that many recipients become trapped in the system, unable to escape the cycle of poverty and dependence. Similar social assistance bodies in Ontario, like the Ontario Works and the Ontario Disability 
Support Program, or ODSP, report that one in five people stay on the program for five years or longer. This is not only a tremendous cost to taxpayers, with welfare programs consuming billions of dollars annually, but it is also a tragic waste of human potential. By trapping individuals in a cycle of dependence, these programs rob them of the opportunity to build better lives for themselves and their families, to contribute to their communities, and to realize their full potential as productive members of society. However, the costs of the dependency trap go beyond just the financial burden on taxpayers. There's also a profound social cost, one that threatens to erode the very foundations of Canadian society itself. As more and more Canadians become dependent on government assistance, there is a risk that private forms of support, such as charitable giving and community-based initiatives, will be crowded out. After all, why should individuals bother to support their local food bank or homeless shelter when the government is already providing assistance through welfare programs? This crowding out effect can have devastating consequences for social cohesion and solidarity. When individuals no longer feel a sense of responsibility or obligation to support their fellow citizens through private acts of kindness and generosity, the very fabric of society begins to fray. Communities become more atomized and disconnected, with individuals increasingly looking to the government to solve all of their problems rather than working together to build stronger, more resilient communities. You can see this effect playing out in the data. Charitable giving by Canadians has been on the decline in recent years, with fewer Canadians making donations to charitable organizations, and those who do donate giving less on average than in the past. In 2019, only 19% of Canadian tax filers claimed a charitable donation, down from 25% in 2019. 2006, and among those who did donate, the average donation was just $357, a far cry from what is needed to support a robust and vibrant civil society. Meanwhile, according to a Statistics Canada report, these charitable donations fell from almost 1 in 4 in 2012 to just a little more than 1 in 6 in 2022. Of course, none of this is to suggest that social programs and entitlements are inherently bad or unnecessary. These programs play a vital role in providing a social safety net and ensuring that all Canadians have access to the basic necessities of life. But when these programs are allowed to grow unchecked, without proper oversight and accountability, they can quickly become insidious, a burdensome and unsustainable drain on society as a whole. The stakes could not be higher. The future of Canada and the well-being of generations to come hangs in the balance. With rising costs, inefficiencies, and unintended consequences, the foundation of Canada's social safety net is beginning to crumble. What was once intended to provide a lifeline for those in need has become a burden on taxpayers, a barrier to economic mobility, and a source of frustration for many Canadians. As entitlements and welfare programs strain under the weight of increasing demand and unsustainable costs, it is clear that a fundamental reassessment of Canada's social policies and priorities is needed, or catastrophe for the Great White North is ineludable. If you like this video, hit the like button and help us spread the word. And don't forget to subscribe to get notifications on our latest news and analysis. In the meantime, check out one of these videos here to learn more. Thanks for watching.